Now, finally, we welcome a fighter who for far too long has battled in the shadow of Naomi Mary. Yeah. Did you get that? That was an impersonation. Anyway. The man has the longest unbeaten run in British boxing history. 35 fights, 35 wins. He's about to take on the European champ, Lennox Lewis, in what could be an eliminator for a crack at Iron Mike Tyson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, the British heavyweight boxing champion, Gary Mason. <laughs> You've been getting a lot of aggravation um, lately on the show, haven't you? Yeah. And from all sorts of people. Yeah. So I bought you these pair of shorts, and if you wear these, they'll think you can fight. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so good. Mm. Thank you, Gary. How come, how come nobody calls you Gaza? <laughs> I don't think I cry often enough. <laughs> good man. <laughs> You've, um, you're missing, you're, you're smaller than I thought you'd be. You mean I'm smaller than you've seen me before? Yeah. You lost a lot of weight. Well, I went on a, an extensive training program in, in America and um, I lost quite a lot of weight. What are you down to now? Um, when I went there, I went on a diet and I was on a diet trying to get down to 25 stone. <laughs> <laughs> only a joke, only no, a yeah, joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, look. look, if you tell a joke, we're all going to laugh, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we all get it. Now, you've got a fight on May the 6th. Which yeah. could be the most important of your career, and probably is. Well, it is, because uh, Mike Tyson has said he's, he'll be willing to come to Britain in the summer and face the winner of the Lennox Lewis and me fight. And um, I'm also ranked fourth, and as you know, George Foreman is fighting Evander Holyfield, and Mike Tyson is fighting Razor Ruddock, and both of those, all of those four, are ranked above me, so I'll be the logic of the next one. So you're number mind. five in the, in the rating? Gone up to number four in one of the ratings as well. Brilliant. Yes. But, I mean, the, the hype has started already with Lennox Lewis calling you fatty. Yeah. No, this started a long time ago. Lennox Lewis was calling me names while I was out of action, while my career was in the balance. And um, I wasn't able to reply because I didn't know whether I was going to fight again. But now I'm back, and I think um, Lennox knows I'm back, and I'm going to make him pay for a lot of what he said. The good thing about my profession is that, like, if you ever go at me now, there's nothing I can do, is there? Well, but Lennox Lewis, he can have a go at me. There's a lot that I can do, and I'll get paid for that as well. <laughs> Now, are you serious about wanting to fight Mike Tyson? Oh, yeah, I'm serious. My object is to fight for the world title. Remember, I've never been beaten. I haven't been knocked out and anything else, regardless of who I fought. So there's no reason to say I shouldn't fight Mike Tyson. The bloke you had on there earlier on, was it, you say, 50 to 1 chance of him having a child? And he's had a child, so surely there must be some chance of me winning the world title. But of course, he's not the champ. It's Evander Holyfield who's the champ. Yes, but still Mike Tyson's the person to beat, isn't he? And right. if he says he's coming first, then he's the one I've got to beat. We talked about, you talked just in passing about uh, that uh, accident to your eye. Yeah. Now, that was very serious, wasn't it? Yes, it was very serious. A, a detachment didn't do anybody serious because I'm sure everybody values their sight. And like I, of course, value my sight. But then I had to weigh up the, the pros and cons. Um, you, you're in a career and you're getting almost there and there's nothing to deter you, nothing that says to you, you can't get right to the very top. And all of a sudden you've got this thing that says, right, you've got to stop, you can't do it anymore. And I had to, to weigh up the risk, work out whether it was worthwhile me going on with my career and taking the chance. But you were prepared to risk losing the eye? Yes, at, at, the end, at the end of the day, I thought that boxing is what, what I was best at. And um, I hadn't achieved what I wanted to achieve. And the worst thing in the world is to, later on in life, is to still be wondering how well would I have done. What do you want to achieve? What? Well, my main ambition is to be the first British fighter to win the world title. That's the main one at the moment. What would you do then? I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I really don't know what I do after I've done that. Um, they, I can do various things. I, I actually run a business and um, I do a lot of commentary for, um, for television. Yeah. Do so you see yourself as being a fighter for a long time? How old are you now? Um, I'm 28, recently turned 28. I don't see myself being a fighter much more than maybe three years. After I've had a world title fight, then I'll determine what route to go. But at the moment, I am not one of those fighters who've got the bug to keep going and going after they've but done their best. George Foreman, who we interviewed here, mm. is still in the ring. And as you say, he's contending. He's fighting Holyfield. He's fighting the champion at 42 years of age. And I think he's probably a bit older than that, only he won't admit it. Yeah, well, some fighters can do that. I, I, I saw Henry Cooper recently, and I said to him, Henry, why don't you make a comeback? I'm sure we'll have a big match like me and you having a, Henry having a comeback. Yeah. But so, but I think... Um, Foreman, you know what it is, there's something about America and Americans, they've got this idea of 
They keep going on, like the Sugar Rays, the Ali's, they just keep going on doing that little bit more. We don't know whether it's for money or we don't know whether it's for glory. Only he can answer that question. What about Frank Bruno? I did, well, on Sports Personality of the Year, he implied that he um, might well come back to... Frank's been, doing, up. Frank's been doing a lot of implying for two years, but the only people he's kidding are the people that listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> are we not, you don't think we're going to see Frank back in the ring? Well, um, you, you see Frank more often than I do. You should ask him these questions. I'm sure he'll answer them. <laughs> you, and Frank, you and Frank were, for a while, part of the same stable. You spied together and all the rest. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever feel that you were in his shadow? Or that well, if you, it, boxing is a business like any other thing, and Frank was a professional four years before I was, and I can't just come and all of a sudden jump in the front of the queue and, and start saying, like, well, I'm the best. Or my manager at that time, Terry Lawless, he couldn't go out to the world and say, well, I've got the best heavyweight in the world, and then, like, about Frank, and then the next minute go out and say the same thing about me. It just wouldn't work. So it was, it was business that I stayed um, behind Frank and in Frank's shadow. And me being a business person, I understood that. And then, with, then you, you split with Terry Lawless since, was that... Because of, of Frank? Or? No, it was just the various things. I, I still ring Terry up and speak to Terry now, and I still think he's one of the best managers we've ever had in this country. But um, th there are differences. Any relationship, there's always differences, but they don't have to be sort of like differences where you fall out and want to fight no, each other. Of not. Well, I what you need now, of course, is a few catchphrases and somebody like Harry Carpenter. To say no, do you really think you I need that? Do you need another one? I don't think you need anything. Yeah, no, you no. Need I take that back, Gary. I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you could adopt somebody like Gary Newborn and have some kind of cross chat with him. You could do ads, you could yeah, no, do there, panto. There's Lynham's always trying to like, um, stitch me up and get me, draw me into the Frank conversation. But we, we have all the arguments off screen. Yeah. And um, I have a good rapport with um, Richard Keyes, but I shouldn't mention Richard Keyes' name because he's on the other channel, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's too late now, and I'm certainly not going to chastise you. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about. Tell me about your tactics. Can you tell us what, how you're going to duff up Lennox Lewis? Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like there's a lot of rap fans in here, but there's a rap record by LL Cool J, and it's called Mama Says Knock You Out. And um, Lennox Lewis, it, like, with all the things that he was saying when I was injured, I went up to my mum's for dinner on Sunday, and she said to me, um, beat that guy up because he's been saying a lot of things about you, and it really upset me. Because you know what it's like? No parents like their sons being, like, coated off, of whether it's true or not. And so... That's my excuse to really beat the life out of him. <laughs> <laughs> what's going to be? What's going to be your weight? What's your intended weight when you fight? Um, something similar to what it was. There's been a great big thing made out of my weight, but that started a long time ago. Anybody who doesn't do anything for six months because of injury, you're going to put on a lot of weight. And people say to me, "How did I lose the weight?" I say it was just as easy to lose as it was to put on. Yeah. <laughs> now what? Uh, the 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 young person who who chatted to you said that that at the end of the conversation she had with you, that you, you talked about being a cricketer, that this is a side view that we don't know. Yes, about. there's a, there's a Bumpery team, um, it's a Bumpery um, celebrity cricket team run by um, David English, and we play around the country in charity matches, um, Dennis You're Waterman, a cricketer. David English. Are you a bowler or a batsman? Or? I've, I've learned to become a little bit of both, I'm not good at anything, I'm just there on the field. I can chase the balls well, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, we hope it's going to be a great fight. Okay, but there's, look, just one there's a one big match we've got on the 12th of July. Oh, we're playing the, cricket. Yeah, we're playing the Prime Minister's 11, which yeah. should be a good match. So I'll be trying to bowl at major. Yes. <laughs> That'd well, be an achievement, wouldn't it? It would, certainly, yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure you'll be great, and we look forward to a terrific fight. Thank you. And uh, if you do get in the ring with Tyson, I hope you give him a good fight as well. No, you'll get one. He's, he's going to get a message from the British public. Is he? Yes, I've got it written right here. <laughs> Gary Mason, ladies and gentlemen. To Gary, thanks to Anton, to Robert, and the Langham family. Friday's another chance to see if we can get it right. It's by and for the ladies.